In trying to find the shapes of something, some of them are more obvious than others, and there's no one way to do it. For example, the flower. There's multiple ways I could look at this, um, and I could make it really confusing. But what I try and think about, if I look at a flower, it feels like a cylinder to me. There's a cylinder in the center around which all the petals live. Now, I just draw this cylinder, and then I'll kind of draw the ovals of these petals around it, maybe some in the center just to kind of give myself a general feeling for that shape of the flower. And that helps me when I'm painting it because then I know why certain shadows are where they are. It seems confusing. This is the kind of thing that the more you do, the more you get the hang of it. Obviously at the top of my glass, there's an oval. Now all the other ovals that fall underneath this cup or inside the cup are all gonna to have to be centered. So I like to draw just a, a an idea of where the center line is. And if I'm drawing this from scratch, I normally wouldn't do it on top of the photo like this. I do it on the paper and I'll demonstrate that next. But I kind of get an idea for how tall versus how wide that oval is. And to make a perfect oval, I, what I'll do a lot of times is create a box around the oval. When I create that bounding box, the reason I do that because then I look at these areas that I'm shading here. So I've created that simple shape of that oval, but I'm looking at these corner triangles. If these all look fairly equal, they're all about the same, then I know my oval is right. However, if I was to draw an oval that was slightly off, for example, and then I drew a bounding box around it, and you could use a straight edge and a ruler to create this bounding box, but you can instantly see I've got a small little triangle here and a bigger one here, really big one here, and one that's more right up there. I want to make sure they're all about the same. So that's where you can start to refine the shape. Make sure that oval is right so that all four are more equal. That'll help you get a more balanced oval. Going back to our simple shapes. Obviously, we've got another circle here. And look at that circle and oval of the bottom of the cup actually kind of lines up with the T. That doesn't always happen, but you'll see that sometimes. And those little things that happen when you see the oval of the teacup itself matching up with the T inside, that's a serendipitous thing that is really good for the design that you wouldn't see with the naked eye if you weren't trying to find these ovals, these um, rectangles the triangle shapes that I might see in the leaves themselves. Notice I'm not worried about getting every piece of that leaf. I can have some cropped out. Same here. I mean, I might see an oval in this handle and then a triangle where it meets. It looks really confusing like this, but all of these shapes are important because they all line up and match. And then when I take it to the tracing paper, and I try to refine it. See how the tracing paper is slightly see-through? Now I can refine my drawing. I can just add in the shapes. Okay, there's that, that oval that connects. And taping it to the board or table that you're working on can really help as well. And I see my uh, flower and the way it's got that um, cylinder with those ovals kind of shape, but I can refine those shapes a little bit. But still, they always connect to that bottom oval. This helps me create the shape of the rose and the teacup for painting, which is simplified, not super detailed, and all from those basic shapes. Here's my gecko as well, same thing. Multiple ways that I could go in here. I could start with just some circles, for example. I know his eye looks like two circles. But when I look at his other eye here, it's kind of connected. It almost is like there's a cylinder that connects those two eyes because of the way that they bump out. His face itself, I see a triangle shape that kind of comes across like that. But again, there's no wrong way to do it. Maybe there's a cylinder, a cylinder for his body. That is much 
wider here and get skinnier down there. There are more cylinders for his arms. Even his fingers are like little cylinders or tubes. All of this, again, while seemingly very confusing, are very helpful then when I go in to refine that shape. Just kind of curve out that original shape of that triangle. Maybe create a few of those bumps of his little body. And his little fingers get kind of bulbous at the tip. So you just go in afterwards, now that you've created those basic shapes, you have an idea of where everything is going to go. That gives you the basis for the good drawing that you can refine afterwards. Now to transfer that drawing, what I would do is I could use transfer paper, of course, but I can also create my own transfer paper. So I'll take my drawing that I've done of my little gecko and I'll turn it over. I'm going to use the 6B. That's really far away from the HB. It gets much darker. If I hold it on its side and I push down, so I'm using the width of that graphite itself, push down fairly hard and rub that edge right on top of that drawing. And I used a marker to refine that drawing, but really, normally I would just use maybe a 2B pencil. I'm gonna make sure I push hard and rub all over that drawing and go over it a couple times, making sure you really get a lot of pencil down. Now, I've created a transfer drawing for myself. I'm gonna put the pencil away and go to a colored pencil now. If I wanna transfer this to paper, well, I just get out my sketchbook and go to a clean page, lay this down over top and transfer it. But I'm gonna transfer it to a board right now, as if I was gonna paint this right onto this board. So what I would normally do is I'd line him up to where I wanted him to be, whether tall or, or wide. Of course, this is not a complete drawing, so a complete drawing would have all the main elements I wanted to put into the painting, including the shadow, but no detail, no small little elements of the trees, maybe just big shapes for the trees in the background. Um, that way, it's just nice and simple. Put a piece of tape or two pieces of tape at that top edge so that I can see what I'm doing. I'm going to take a colored pencil and that way I'll know where I've already transferred. And I'm going to push down lightly to start, pressing a little harder if I need to, if I op lift this up and I don't see my transfer drawing. But the harder I push, especially if I'm on paper or canvas, the more I'm going to groove the paper. And I really don't want to groove the paper. I'm working on a board so I can go really hard and not have to worry. But this transfer process, it comes in handy when you really want a drawing to be done right before you transfer it, before you start painting on it. You can do all the work on paper, get out all the kinks, and then start going.